Burnout is what is not like just one thing. It's like a 12 stage process. You feel like physical symptoms. There's like avoidance. There's like the mental pressure that you start putting on yourself, the social withdrawal. Try and like stop it as soon as you get, as soon as you start going down the ladder. Your mental health is so much harder to reclaim than a new position. You've got to do something every day that's productive but it can't be done with work, something social, something physical, and something personal. Working in your 20s, and it's something you also talk about, and I think it's something which I could take a lot of advice from, uh, seeing as I'm starting my first proper office job oh, cool. on Monday. Wait, where are you starting? Oh my God, that's so exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working in, in London so um, as a salesman. So long hours, uh, lots of intense, I think strategizing so I in, think in, you'll in, do really well I think you'll well, be fine I, first of all thank you and, and second of all do you have any advice on avoiding burnout something which I actually struggle with oh my god me too me too um the first thing I always say to people is like burnout is what is not like just one thing it's like a 12 stage process and when I like say this to people people are like what are you talking about I'm like no the, the creator of burnout burnout is like stage 13 like there are so many things that like happen before that. So just take note of them. And, and, you know, I cannot remember them all from the top of my head, but there are things like, um, you know, you feel like physical symptoms, there's like avoidance, there's like the mental pressure that you start putting on yourself, the social withdrawal, try and like stop it as soon as you get, as soon as you start going down the ladder. And especially for like people who are working, I know this is going to sound like sometimes people give me like shit for this, but like, it's just a job. It's just a job. And your mental health is so much harder to reclaim than a new position. Like if you like push yourself to a period of burnout, like it can take you like a really severe period of burnout. It can take you like years to recover from because it is like a physical, it's a physical experience. So always prioritize your mental health. And then I have this equation that I used to do when I worked a corporate job. So I used to work as a management consultant, which no one knows what they actually do. And I totally appreciate that. I think, I honestly think the government just created the job title to like, I don't know, get people employed, but (laughs) no, it's real. I promise it is real. Kind of. Um, I bet it's like a notoriously long hour game, right? It's like you don't finish when the clock finishes, like you finish when you're done with your job. And the way that I used to go about it was I used to have like a formula for making sure like that my kind of soul was still nourished. And it was like four things. You've got to do something every day that's productive, but that can't be done with work. So it can't be like, oh, I finished that task at work. It has to be productive for you. Something social, something physical and something personal. So it was like, social and it didn't have to be like intensive. Like I need to go and have dinner with a friend. It could be like, I'm going to call my mom on my commute. I'm going to, you know, at my lunch break, like send my friend a voice note, whatever. Then like the productive thing could be like, okay, when I get home, like, I know I want to go to bed. Like I'm going to have an everything shower. I'm going to do my dishes. I'm going to do my laundry. Same with physical. It's like, just do some form of exercise it's going to make you feel great. Even if you have standing desks, the best. And then of course, like something just for you, something that feel would like you might think would make you feel guilty, like getting takeout, like what binge watching a TV show, just like do something that still makes you feel happy. Even if someone would say it's lazy or whatever. And that was like what I used to do every single day. And it was great. It wasn't like amazing, but it was like, okay, I'm still human. Like I'm not just this like drone who just like works a job and like has no friends anymore and doesn't take care of their body anymore and like doesn't do anything for themselves. So try and remember that formula, I guess. Yeah. It's a good way to think about it. And I think it's actually kind of crazy that you get pushed back for saying it's just a job. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's kind of like people forget that there are other things. Um, yeah. All the time. And I watched, I watched, um, it was a while back, actually, I think the podcast you did with Ali Abdal. I was um, going to say, and, well, yeah, yeah, it's a goodie. And he pushed, he, he pushed back on you for it, right? He when did, you said, yeah. I love him though. Yeah. And you said actual wage, which was what he disagreed with. Um, so maybe you could tell us what you mean by actual wage. Um, I still and that it's stand actually by more that. about balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I stand by that a hundred percent because 
Oh, it's something that really grinds. Oh, also, I just will say mad respect for Ali. Like, I love that we had that discussion because it was like, you never re- really think about your ideas unless someone questions them. So it was great. But actual wage, I think it's, it, I didn't come up with it. It's just like a thing in the ethos, in the ether, sorry. But it's basically like, don't be doing so much more than what you're getting paid for. Don't be like, if there is an option there to, work like extreme overtime and not get paid for it. And you're getting paid 60 K a year. Like, yeah, you could climb the corporate rat race and you could get ahead and maybe someone would notice that you are doing those extra hours. Chances are they probably won't. They probably won't notice. And all it's doing is putting your life like at not jeopardy, but just kind of in you know, reducing the quality of the life you have outside of work. And I think that like people push back because they're like, no, if you want to get ahead, like if you want to be successful, if you want this, this, that, like you need to do those extra things. Like you have a job to do. I get it. But again, like success in your profession, maybe being the best, always being the one who's promoted first, like that's might feel really, really fulfilling for a while. But as someone who like did that, it was like, eventually you need more. Like eventually you're going to have a look around and be like, focus all this effort on doing all these things for people who I was trying to impress. And it really hasn't made my life much better. So act your wage is basically act how much you're getting paid. And it's also like, if there's someone in like a senior position getting paid $30,000 more than you, who has the same responsibilities as you, ask for like ask for a pay raise like if you're doing their job you should be compensated fairly for it um again i don't think that's a crazy thing to say but people sometimes don't agree which i get want your head and hair to feel cool and clean been going to extreme measures to cool your head off then get yourself a manscape don't be like ollie and take your scalp from zero to hero with the new scalp buffer now use the discount code low to get your 20 percent off do you think then with that extra time that someone has, for example, in your opinion, do you think people should then have a side hobby or, or what advice would you give someone to find a passion on the side? Mm, that's a really great question. If that's like the thing you want to do, I will say I'm, a, I'm doing like an episode coming up on like the psychology of hobbies because mm-hmm. like I'm notorious for just like collecting them and then ditching them. But it's fun. Cause I'm like, I want to try all this, this random stuff. Um, the thing that I always tell people is like, if you want to find a hobby, find your flow state and your flow state is like, I think you guys might know this. It's like the state of just feeling uber focused, but also excited, concentrated, challenged, just like a supreme enjoyment of an activity where the time just flows by. And some people like get it when they're running, right? Some people get it when they're like making pottery, when they're like rock climbing, when they're like doing, when they're knitting, doing whatever, like notice the activities where time just floats by. You're really excited and absorbed by the activity. And I think that's like a great way to like discover a side passion. Also just like go and try new stuff. Like my big thing at the moment is like boxing. I was never exposed to that as a kid, but it's like, and it's weird and it's strange going and doing new things, but so is like never doing them because everyone was a beginner at some point. It's like, maybe that was when they were three, maybe it's when they're 50. Like no one really cares that much if you're new at something or if you're making a fool of yourself, if anything, they probably want to like help you out. So a side piece of advice on that. Yeah. I think people forget that hobbies can kind of just be fun in themselves. Like this kind of idea of generalized productivity, um, kind of makes people think, okay, well, if I enjoy reading, you know, I should be reading a really specific kind of book or if, you know, I should be one of my hobbies should be exercise cause I can get fitter. And I- I'm kind of guilty of that as well. Cause when I was younger, I used to get super frustrated at myself cause I get super passionate about a hobby for like two, three months. Like when I was 12, it was the Rubik's cube. When I was 11, it was magic. And I'd become like as good as I could for about two, three months. And then instantly I'd drop it um, and just not be interested in it anymore. But looking back, I don't know if that's such a bad thing. And then actually just doing things for the sake of doing them can actually be quite fun. 
Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that Ollie generalized productivity. <laughs> yeah. Like I absolutely love that. And it's like as someone who turned one of their hobbies into a, into my, like it was a side hustle and now it's my job. Like you do lose love for it. So it's like, you don't, not everything, you don't need to be like amazing at everything. Like it doesn't need to be a potential career. You don't need to be going to the Olympics. Like if it's not fun anymore, stop doing it. Loneliness is like hunger. All it is is actually a social cue. I need connection. And all that loneliness is, is a little alarm bell in your head saying, time to reach out, time to reconnect, time to maybe find new friends. Gemma Speck is someone everyone in their 20s needs. Point you say friendship is more important than romantic relationships in your 20s or can be more important. If friendships go to the wayside, because of a romantic relationship, it, it can be actually quite detrimental to a person's ability to grow into a, a well-rounded person. It's like consuming just one media source. Just try something. Try something and realize that just because you have invested in it to begin with doesn't mean that that's going to be the rest of your life. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that short clip of our interview with Gemma Speg. If you want to see the full interview, you can click right here. But more importantly, if there's anything you disagree with, please leave a comment. We reply to all comments and we want to hash it out and have a discussion because everyone learns that way. Make sure to like and subscribe as well. We got loads more content like that coming soon. See you guys next time.